And this is a question that, you know, is worth talking about. It's a question a lot of people have. Why would anyone work under socialism? So under socialism, um, all of your basic needs are met. Um, housing, education, food, water, etc. Um, and so a question a lot of people have is, if you have all those needs met, why wouldn't you just sit in your house and play PS5 all day? And I'm curious what the, you know, socialist perspective is on that. The way I would phrase this would be like, why would anyone do the like crappy jobs under socialism? You know, if I had all my needs met, like I would want to work, but I would just like be a full-time content creator. I would just like make YouTube videos all day. Who, who under a socialist economic system, who gets to decide who gets to just spend all day making YouTube videos? Um, and who gets to decide who has to clean the toilets? All things the same, you know, if the person who cleans the toilets gets the exact same thing as the person who Twitch streams, I would much rather be the person who Twitch streams. And I think most people would feel that way. The way it currently works under capitalism is, quote unquote, um, the market decides who gets to be a Twitch streamer. Like the reason Hassan gets to, to Twitch stream, it's because he gets viewers. And the reason I got to work a job that I don't like, it's because I don't get viewers. And I'm not saying this is the best way to do it. I'm not saying I agree that this is how it should be, but I, I that's kind of my perspective on like how I would frame this question. Who gets to decide who gets to do what work, assuming all things are the same? I do agree that like long term in humanity's history, if we can achieve a system where everyone can work on their passions and all the kind of crappier jobs are automated or something. I don't know. That's totally possible and plausible and would be great. But currently that's not exactly the case. That way, whatever we produce by working, we could redistribute amongst ourselves or use to do cool stuff like, I don't know, what if nobody lived on a concrete slab right next to cars and sewer water? Crazy ideas like that. But capitalists like to keep their profits more than they like doing cool stuff. So that's pretty much where the story ends. And where does it end with you socialists? First, you want to treat the homeless like they're people. Now you're telling me you want everyone to have guaranteed shelter, food, medical care, and education? I believe in all that. I think there sh should be, you know, a universal basic, um, like, standard of living that the government provides. Housing, food, education, healthcare, um, anything you need to live. And I, I would extend that to, like, internet access, things like that. Um, basic tech, a computer, you know, maybe even a vehicle, depending on where you live. I don't know. There should be a basic standard of living the government provides. Now, I think that that could be achieved today. We just need to like tax the rich enough, pool that money and then distribute it via like social welfare programs. Um, so I don't know if we necessarily, and I'm still learning, if we necessarily need to have a separate economic system, like all that money is there, like, and we can just extract it from the rich via regulation. That's kind of where I lie now. How does capitalism incentivize work? A big way capitalists incentivize people. Like, do you want to live? Then get, get to fucking work, which I don't think is healthy and I don't think it's positive. You are not guaranteed a minimum standard of living mm -hmm. under capitalism. So it's either you- But that's, I don't think that's necessarily like a requirement. Like that's just our current form of capitalism. Um, but if people want that, we could vote for it today. And I guess the difference would be like under socialism, like that's inherent to socialism. Whereas under capitalism, that's like an extra step you'd have to take. Um, so I guess there's that. At least it'll get our society to be as productive as possible. And overall, that will mean that we will maximize human potential. Millions may be destitute, but hey, we got the lines to touch. <laughs> Except it doesn't work. Capitalism doesn't maximize productivity or human potential, even by its own standards. In the US, there are more people that are unemployed than there are jobs for them to do. While you may have heard that there are more jobs in the economy than people to fill them, especially during the quote, great resignation, that's not strictly speaking, what's the word, true? Most news outlets use the government's preferred data on unemployment, a number that is usually pretty low because when that number is low, it looks good. When you try to actually count up how many people are really unemployed by adding up those who are miscategorized, unemployed, or underemployed, you get a much bigger number, 26.8 million people. Way more people than there are jobs to fill. We are subjecting millions of people to crushing poverty. 
without guaranteed housing, healthcare, or adequate food on the theory that it'll get them to work. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't agree with the idea that, like, yeah, capitalism is a good way to get people to work. Like, clearly, this is, this is the system we live under, and yet 26 million people are facing some level of unemployment. So clearly, this capitalist system is not a very good incentivizer to work. So that's interesting to me. Our governments oh care God. more about how profitable an economy is than putting that profit to good use. It's true. So this reserve army of labor is perpetually maintained. If government solved poverty, they would hurt profits. And that's what's yes, most important to absolutely. them. absolutely. But that's for the unemployed. Those who escape... But we already do a lot of things that hurt profits. Like, we already have a lot of regula regulations that hurt profits. Like... You can't dump that toxic sewage into the water supply. Okay, I got to find a reasonable, a more environmentally sound way to dump that toxic sewage. Okay, that's going to cut into my profits. So we all we already do a lot of things to regulate corporate profits. Um, if we cut all those regulations out, like a lot of Republicans want to do, there would be more corporate corporate profits. What I'm saying is, let's just regulate more. So there would be less corporate profits, but we could still get the things... Second thought wants like universal housing. Like I, I, oh man, I did this for a video on my other YouTube channel. Like universal housing would not be particularly expensive in America, nor would like universal college, for instance, that would be like $75 billion a year for universal college in the United States, where we spend 775 billion on the military. Like, a lot of these social programs would not be particularly expensive. We could, I think you could calculate it. We could have this baseline level of um, accommodations like housing, food, uh, education, whatever, name, name, it, name them all. Um, and the rich could stay rich ostensibly, which, you know, you could tax them even more then and do even more better social good with that money. Um, but we need to just convince people to want to do those regulations and want to do those um, tax increases. And the problem is, especially in America and most places where neoliberalism is the normative um, position, the populations don't even understand that these are things that should happen, let alone could happen. Under capitalism, workers are disincentivized from advocating for more automation because it threatens to rob them of their job, which they need to live. Capitalists are also disincentivized from automating jobs away because it's not very difficult to find someone desperate enough to do it for a lower pay. Building robots is expensive. Yeah, I think automation is going to be a huge test for capitalism. Like, let's just take like McDonald's. You could audit, like, let's say you automate the entire like McDonald's industry from like taking orders to creating the food itself. It's all done by robots inside the building. How many, like how many millions of jobs is that you know worldwide like that like while so like you're cutting out a bunch of jobs and then all and then you're getting all the profit goes to mcdonald's um i think if we were to maintain capitalism we would have to tax those profits we would, who is who's buying burgers at that point what do you mean? Um, but my point is we'd have to tax those excess profits and like then redistribute it to society. So yeah, automation, like I said, is going to be capitalism's like next big test. Like when it puts like AI, when AI and automation put everyone out of the job and like there's no one, no one's working anymore, but there are still companies taking in profit. Um, how How are people going to be able to afford to live. How are people going to be able to afford apartments, let alone houses, if every job is automated and all money is going to the companies now? Like who's buying the burgers in the automated McDonald's? I'm buying the burger. How your job is now automatic? Oh, so you're saying, yeah, I'm just out of a job. And the, yeah, that, that's the point I was making, right? Like eventually like 90% of all jobs are going to be automated. But like, those businesses will still exist, so there will still be profit to extract, um, but they will just all go to McDonald's. But, like, if no one has money to purchase... You know, this, this is the point you're getting at. If no one has the money to purchase McDonald's now, how is McDonald's going to get money? So, yeah, this automation, this AI stuff, 
is going to be the ultimate test of capitalism. Yeah, I mean, if 90% of all jobs could be automated, like, that's where I'm like, okay, boom, let's, let's install a Marxist utopia. Like, at that point, I'm cool with it. I got it. Okay. See, I'm learning slowly. The wheels are, the wheels are turning slowly. Spoiler, it's not going to work. Yeah. So maybe, like, this is kind of where I'm at. Like, maybe in the short term, we can achieve some, like, hyper-social democracy where we have capitalism, but we tax it so heavily that we can do, we can provide people those basic needs um, via social welfare programs universally. Um, but ultimately, with the advent of AI and automation, um, yeah, I think that will allow easily, maybe you could, maybe you could have socialism now. I don't know, but I think that will e more easily allow for a socialist economic system for sure. When I was giving my spiel before the video about like who gets to decide what jobs, I was not taking into account the relatively soon reality of automation and AI taking over virtually every job. You can have it now for sure. Yeah, probably like I'm, I've not, I'm not a theory head. I've not read any theory. So I, I don't know that like I, I have to take socialists word for it because I have not done the research myself. All I know is capitalism because that's all I've lived under. The only reason we have a weekend is because people died protesting a seven day work week. Exactly. I I, I and I do agree with this. Like regardless of my opinions on whether we can achieve a good economic system while maintaining some form of capitalism, I don't believe in the free market because the free market gets you that the free market gets you child labor. Um, the free market gets you slavery. Um, so if we are going to have some kind of market system, you could call it a, a capitalist system, maybe it's going to require unthinkable amounts of regulation, which we already have, but we need way the fuck more. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I agree. Usually Kids need to get capital. back to work. Hell yeah, brother. In this lower phase of communism, the guiding principle would be from each according to their ability to each according to their contribution. Oh, oh, interesting. Maybe this is what level of communism I'm at, frankly. If you want to be the Twitch streamer, you know, all you get is a house, you know, education, whatever, healthcare. But if you want to do the shittier job or, or the more difficult job, you know, physically more difficult or whatever, like if you want to go to school and become a doctor, take, take all that effort, that's incredibly difficult you would get more in this lower phase of communism then from each according to their ability to each according to their need that's the one i've heard i actually have never heard this version um which i find interesting in in, in more of a short term like i said um long term when like everything can be automated i'm more open to um the what he's about to say the uh from each according to the ability to each according to their need Socialism okay. would not be a perfect society. For example, would there still be coercion? The honest answer is maybe. So long as there is scarcity, there will almost always need to be a- Boom, that's the kicker for me, scarcity. How will post-scarcity society function? Yeah, exactly. This is exactly um, what we were talking about. This is what you want? Yeah. That's always been for the last like couple years now that I've become more interested in learning about socialism. Um, is the, is the notion of scarcity. If we can achieve post scarcity, sign me up for Marxism. Um, but while there is scarcity, I, I struggle to see it working. Um, now I think a lot of our scarcity is artificial and can be, um, solved. Um, but there will still be scarcity currently now, like, like stuff we talked about, like automation and, and AI will do a lot to improve that. Um, but that, that is where I currently have hangups. I agree with all that. I still think it technically could be achieved under our current system. Maybe it'd be easier to achieve under socialism.